everybody. Welcome, Kroiso, to this Miss Hubnut video. Today you join us in Kenarth. Kenarth is the border. It would have all been part of Doved, which was the old county, but this bridge now forms the border between Ceredigion on this side, Carmarthenshire on this side, and if you go a little bit that way, you're in Pembrokeshire. Now a little bit about the bridge itself. This bridge was built in 1787 by William Edwards and his son David. As you can see, the construction includes these circular holes and these circular holes are called spandrels. Now more often in architecture they come in a triangular shape but on this bridge they're circular within a square and the reason for having these holes is it reduces the weight of the bridge but doesn't reduce the strength of the bridge. Now something I discovered while I was researching the bridge is that William Edwards has actually built a bridge previous to this. I believe it was the longest single span bridge. It was built in Pontypridd and um, it collapsed. So he then came up with a concept for this bridge, including the spandrels. And as you can see, it's, it stood the test of time. There was said to be a crossing on this river from about the 12th century. Uh, but this particular bridge, as I mentioned, from 1787. And if you're into your old Instagram stuff, there's nothing better than taking a picture stood in the middle of that circle just there. <laughs> so this is Kenarth Falls. If you've been here and you visited in the summer, this looks extremely different. There's a lot of rocks cropping out to about here um, and it's almost a trickle. But we've had a lot of rain recently and the Tyvee becomes an absolute monster when it rains. Um, I happen to live on one of the tributaries to the, um, to the Tybee. I'm not going to tell you the name because I've got a story a bit later that's a bit naughty. Um, so yes, we used to live on one of the tributaries and my grandfather, my great uncle, went fishing in uh, Hentan, which is just up the river. And uh, we lived on the tributary. The tributary came up, so we knew the Tybee was up and my dad had to go and rescue them because they had just, the river had risen around them. My dad does like a bit of harbinger of doom news. So he always used to tell me as a child, if you fell in there, they're going to find you in Ireland about a week later. But in more cheery news, the Tybee is very good for fishing. You've got trout, you've got salmon, you've got suin, and the salmon actually leap up the river. The business just over there is called Salmon Leap for that very reason. It's uh, said that the salmon come up here sort of October, November time and they like it if it's been a bit dry and then there's been a bit of rain then you're more likely to see them and also mornings and evenings um i feel like it's a bit rough for them today i don't know they are fish i'm probably being a bit silly about that but yeah i've actually seen them leap it's bizarre you stood here and you see a fish just leap out of the water oh i thought it was a log <laughs> <laughs> you see a fish leap out of the water very very strange but um yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a long, long history of fishing on the Tyvee, which we'll go into a bit more when we talk about the coracle, which is, it's not a unique, but the style of coracle is unique to the Tyvee. Um, but yeah, you can get salmon up to about 20 pounds out of here. And uh, the suin is a beautiful fish. If you've not had it, it's the sea trout. Absolutely delicious. But yeah, this is the Tyvee. It runs from up at Corscaron, near Trigaron. And then it ends in Cardigan, as we've discussed before. At Cardigan, being Abertivy, is the mouth of the Tyvee. It's a wonderful river, but it is very unforgiving, as you can see. So, over the river... <laughs> wow, it's incredible trying to be heard over this. Over the river, you can see the flour mill. That is a 17th century flour mill, but there has said to have been a mill on that site since the 12th century. Gerald of Wales visited in the 12th century. He mentioned salmon, a mill, and a church. It's not the original mill, it's not the original church, but it still remains the same. And just over there is the National Coracle Centre, which we'll talk about in more detail, because the coracle is a fascinating, fascinating vessel. Um, you probably don't believe it today, but I think it was the 80s, there was a Timote advert shot here at Kenner. There's a lady with the long golden hair washing her hair in the river. Do you fancy that today? No, no, I don't think so. So we're going to take a walk up the river because I know historically we used to walk up the river and do a circular loop back down again. 
And I always used to think it was the, um, the what's it was it called, with the magic faraway tree from Enid Blyton. And I swear I could hear those trees whisper. But I don't know if you can still do that route. So we're going to see how far we get. Also, the river is extremely high and we're not going to take any stupid risks. So we're just walking up the side of the river. You can still hear the falls, even though they're quite away that way. This is a lovely footpath, actually. Um, it didn't look like this back in my childhood, but we have seen that this is accessible because we've just seen a gentleman in a mobility scooter come along here. So that is great that everybody can appreciate these beautiful views. So this walkway is a lot um, more substantial than it was when I was a child. And this is thanks to various bodies that have got the funding for this. This is a lovely walkway. Um, and if you want to donate towards it, because as I said, the Tyvee is very unforgiving and she does flood. So she's on the cusp right now and this will get damaged. So anything that you can do to help would be greatly appreciated. What does this say, dear? Diolchun. They are thank... It's, it's thankful, really, because mm -hmm. it's thank you is Diolch. Mm -hmm. So they're thankful for gifts uh, towards any any works, yes, repairs, and then that's like conservation in the future. Okay, and how would you say all of that? Diolchun am rhoddion tiag at unrhyw waith canal a chadwy y dyfodol. Beautiful. This feels very dramatic. We're walking from Ceredigion into Carmarthenshire. Uh, you can see just across the river one of the two pubs in Kenarth. This is the White Hart. And there's the Three Horseshoes, which includes the old brew house just up the way. There are a couple of tea rooms here. There's a village shop. Uh, if you're looking to come on holiday in the local area, there's a touring field. There's also Kenar Falls Caravan Park Holiday Park. I'm not sure on the entire title, but it's Kenar Falls anyway, um, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. So here we are outside the National Coracle Center, just here. The Coracle is a vessel that's existed for over 2000 years. There are variants on it that across the world in places like Iran, in Vietnam and so on, Originally, it would have been built using willow and then an animal skin stretched on the outside, but it's developed with time so that it's now willow or ash with canvas on the outside and pitch. And we'll talk a little bit more about these coracles. Another attraction that's here is the flour mill, the 17th century flour mill. And the flour mill talks all about poaching on the Tyvee. Um, now, as I mentioned, there was a mill on that site previous to that mill. And apparently people used to go fishing in their coracles float down the river and apparently there was a hatch underneath the mill where they could sneak the fish in. There's a big history of, of uh, poaching on the Tyvee. So the coracle is over 2,000 years old and I think in Aran jumpers they knit it so that it's very distinctive as to where you come from with the weave and it's very true also of coracles. You can tell a Tyvee coracle from a Tawi coracle and so on. The Tyvee coracles are unusual in the fact that they are carried over the head. Coracles are usually carried on the back. These are carried on the head with a strap across here. And I think what makes them distinctive is the weave around the outside for a Tyvee coracle. Now, coracle fishing, you can use a net and you can, uh, you can use a rod, but it's mostly done by having two coracles either side of the river and a net between them. And what they do, they go up the river for miles and then they would quite drift down the river and net any fish that they caught along the way. So a very gentle way of fishing. Now, coracle fishing is something that is dying out. I read an article that in 2020, 2020 rather, there were 12 coracle fishermen on the Tyvee uh, and they were fighting for survival. I think it's something that needs to carry on. But I was quite um, worried for the future of the coracle, but actually there are some positive things going on. In Brecon, you can actually go on a course and build a coracle, which is amazing. And also in the Coracle Centre, I think they have a workshop as well. So coracles hopefully will live on because it's such a beautiful, primitive, ancient form of fishing. You know, we talk about things being sustainable and whatnot. It's just very gentle. It's very much in that ilk. But uh, as I think there are only 12 coracle fishermen on the Tybee at the moment. And there are only certain areas of the Tybee that you can actually fish on. So it's a very fragile thing, but a wonderful thing to continue. 
So as you can see, this is a modern build in slate and stone, but this is an ancient spring that relates to St. Llawdog. Now, St. Llawdog was one of 12 sons of the King of Usk, and he gave up his nobility, all his riches and so on, to become a religious hermit. I'm not sure exactly of any miracles or whatnot he might have done, but he features massively around here. The church in Kenarth is called St. Llawdog, the church in Kilgarran is called St. Llawdog, and this is his spring. So we're gonna go and see the church and talk a little bit more about St. Llawdog. It's interesting they use the word fanon for spring. It does mean spring, but also it makes you think of fountain as well, fanon. It's an interesting word. As many have done historically, we have taken shelter in the church um, because the weather is decidedly Welsh. Mein Buru Glau, it is raining massively. So this church, as I mentioned, Gerald of Wales visited in the 12th century. He mentioned a church. This is not that church. This is built on the site of a medieval church. This was built in 1872. Uh, and it does incorporate various elements of the previous churches. The font in here, which has got five car heads carved in it, is believed to have come from the 12th century. And the interesting thing is they seem to have incorporated some of the tombstones from the previous churches. And I was just reading this one and it's lovely, you know. Um, underneath lieth interred the body of Mrs. Margaret Jones, etc. Uh, and she died when she was 52. And she was endowed with many excellent qualities which she displayed through life. Beautiful, lovely. As a wife, she just discharged the conjugal duties with great fidelity and affection. <laughs> I guess that was important at the time. But I mean, wonderful, humane and charitable without ostentation. Oh, she died really lamented by all her friends and acquaintances. Bless her. But yeah, there's some interesting tombstones here. This is a really interesting church. Because of the history that this is a newer church built on an older site, things have been incorporated. And one of the things that's been incorporated is really ancient. And it's just out here. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Hubnut's going to venture out and look at the text on this. No, he's not. But this stone here, which doesn't look like much, actually dates from the 6th century. And I apologise if I get this wrong. It's believed to be the tombstone of Caragnus, son of Agnellus. Uh, it's written in, I don't know if it's ancient English, because the word F-I-L-S is on there, fi, which is almost French in its rooting, because, you know, the son of somebody in French is fi. So, um, yes, yeah, so that is his tombstone. However, this is not his grave, because in 1894, this stone was moved from farmland nearby to this site. I guess with the invent of the new church, they thought they'd put an added attraction in the, uh, in the churchyard. Now the churchyard looks overgrown, but there is a reason for that. And that is that they are encouraging bees to come and uh, use it. So that's really lovely. Another point on ancient history in Kenarth is that there is believed to be a Norman fortification. It's not signposted, but it does appear on, on OS maps. Uh, it comes, it's a circle with a mound about 20 metres across. It's got a ditch about three metres deep and some rocky banks around it. I've not seen it for myself, so that would be one for you guys to come and, and seek out when you come here. It's worth mentioning when you come to Kenarth, you might have heard the name Kenarth somewhere, particularly if you're a cheese fan, because Cows Kenarth is based uh, near here, near Boncath, I believe. And Cows Kenarth is a family run business. They had many, I think it's five generations of cheese making history. But in 1987, they were impacted by the milk quotas. And so they started to make cheese. The first cheese that they made was a Cair Philly, which is sort of a white crumbly cheese. They still make it to today. Uh, I believe the son is now running the business and he's introduced some of the more modern cheeses, the Perl Wen and the Perl Lass. The Perl Wen, Wen is white, is a brie type cheese. And the Perl Lass is a blue cheese. Perlas from Kaus Kenarth is one of my all time favorite cheeses. It is absolutely delicious. If you're a blue cheese fan, I would highly recommend it. Now you used to be able to go and visit the farm and uh, have a tour of the dairy from above, obviously hygiene regions from above. You could see them making the cheese, uh, taste the cheese and buy the cheese there. I'm not sure if they still do that. If they do, I definitely need to go there. But what they do do, I noticed on their website, 
is that they have an apartment that you can stay in. And when you stay in this apartment, one, you get a guided tour of the farm and the dairy, but two, in your fridge there is cheese! For your arrival, there is cheese! That's amazing! So yes, Cows Kenarth, one of the big successes around here because it's a small family run business. Uh, they had the Queen's approval, it's been in Harrods. The cheeses are absolutely stunning. They've got a whole spectrum of cheeses now. But yeah, definitely worth a mention. I'm here outside the Salmon Leap. As a reward for all the wetness, we're gonna go and have a cup of tea in a moment. This is a gift shop and also a cafe. So we're gonna have a cup of tea and uh, tell you a few stories about Kenarth and the surrounding area. Now this actually belongs to some friends of mine and uh, my friend always puts pictures of the handbags and whatnot on her Facebook and I'm always severely, severely tempted. I am weak for a good handbag. So yes, we're gonna go and have a cup of tea now. We've retreated into the Salmon's Leap for um, a little bit of tea and cake, which is, you know, a very important part of these videos. And uh, we just wanna share a few videos, uh, videos? a few stories. So the first one, I mentioned poaching along the Tyvee and the fact that the flour mill is a, a, but all about poaching um, and there is a long history of poaching. Well, when we moved into our house, a gentleman came and spoke to us. He said, if you see lights down the river, don't worry about it. It's absolutely fine because the river was right at the bottom of our garden. So um, he said, if you see lights down the river, don't worry about it. Bit of an odd conversation. You know, what on earth is that all about? Well, one night these lights did come along the river and uh, mum, didn't do anything about it because she'd been forewarned about it and the next morning she got up and there were some lovely trout on our doorstep which was nice. Um, so a little bit about what we're eating. So this is Barabrith which is a famous Welsh cake. It's a little bit like, is it Bannock Barn in Scotland? Um, so it's a tea loaf, heavy laden with fruit. You soak your fruit and then you cook your Barabrith. Absolutely delicious and you serve it with butter because um, everything's better with butter butter or bacon, one or the other. And Mr. Hubnut's got a um, rocky road. And then of course he's got a tea and I've got a peppermint tea. Another story is that you saw the coracle and it's a one man boat um, that you paddle along the river. They're very difficult to control because they have a tendency to go around in circles. But a gentleman called Bernard Thomas in the 1970s actually took one across the British Channel. It took him 14 hours. I think the record time for crossing is seven hours. Um, and he did it in 14 hours in a coracle. And the cushion that was under his bottom is in the National Coracle Centre over the way. I'm here in the spandrel of the bridge to sort of bring this video to a conclusion. It sounds amazing, it's echoing all over the place. So, a couple of things about Kenarth and staying in the local area. There is a Tora Park just over the side of the river there. And there's another site just as you go out of Kenarth in this direction called Kenarth Falls. Now, Kenarth Falls, was a, is a brilliant place because you um, pay as a tourer to be there, but they have lots of facilities. They have an indoor pool, they have an outdoor pool, they have a clubhouse, they even have a spa. And these, you know, these are testing times financially. So you're not paying by person, you're paying by pitch, and you can use all the facilities, which I think is utterly amazing. Um, on the subject of camping, I have camped by the Tyvee twice in my life. The first time was guide camp. We stayed in those big green bell tents and it was so wet, we had to be rescued and go to Abakeek Hall for a night. And of course, the Tyvee then flooded our campsite the day after we left, so that was a bit hairy. And the second time that I came here, Newcastle Emlyn is four miles in that direction. And I was a very studious student, so I did the Duke of Edinburgh Award. And uh, for our expedition, we walked to Kenarth. God knows where we went. Four miles somehow became 12 and a half miles. And once again, we camped in a field the Tora field just over there, it poured with rain. My last in memory is trying to cook in the pouring rain some Tesco's pasta. Anyway, I digress slightly. Lovely places to stay around here. There's also a site that's got lodges, lots of Airbnbs, and it's a good base for Cardigan, for um, Newcastle Emlyn, Aberaeron and Aberystwyth and so on. It's been a lovely trip to Kenarth. What a wonderful place. Some more deep rooted history. The more you look, the more deep rooted the history is with the stone in the churchyard and the possible fortification and just the absolute beauty of the Tyvee River. So I would definitely recommend coming along to Kenarth for a visit. Thank you very, very much for watching guys and we will see you in a future video, hopefully 
soon future video. Tiolcham Gwilio Paub. Thank you for watching, everybody. Very worth mentioning if you come to Kenarth. Sorry, I thought there was a K truck for a second. I was going to do this again. <laughs>